Good morning. I'm Alison Rose, Chief of Place, Space and Communities Division at Geoscience Australia. It's so nice presenting to you virtually on the lands of the Ngunnawal peoples, whom I acknowledged as the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. We're all participating in Locate 21 because we know the power of spatial information. We're taking the time to gather in person and virtually to talk about how we each bring our piece of the space and spatial information puzzle together to bring benefit to our communities. In the past year alone, we've seen how spatial information can or should be providing societal, environmental and economic benefits to our communities from fighting bushfires to distributing vaccines, we understand the importance of what we do. We all understand the power of space and spatial information, but the key is in how we invest wisely, position for the future and partner to deliver outcomes. As Australia's public sector geoscience organisation, we are the government organisation responsible for collecting and disseminating information on Australia's geology and geography. We have a key role to play in ensuring spatial information is available and accessible, and importantly, that it's utilised by as many industries as possible, thereby creating a location enabled Australia. The spatial industry has been intrinsically linked to space for some time. For decades since the advent of satellite imagery, space has been a vital source of data for spatial applications. In recent years, and as technical capabilities evolve and improve, both the Australian space and spatial sectors have become more diverse in terms of users, more complex in terms of stakeholders, and more holistic in the way space and spatial data is used and managed. And the sectors are becoming more intertwined. The space industry sets up critical elements of the data supply chain, while the spatial industry in turn provides the vast bulk of subsequent data infrastructure, value added content and analytics, and the delivery channels to customers. Optimising development opportunities within this integrated ecosystem over the next decade will create a competitive advantage for Australia. It will also strengthen our environmental management and improve our overall well-being. Indeed, mainstreaming the integration of the space and spatial sectors has the potential to achieve direct, indirect and cumulative impact across multiple industries including surveying, agriculture, construction, consumer, resources, transportation, mining, utilities, and others. The value of space-enabled applications is large and it's growing. The total direct economic benefits from the use of applications of EO data alone was found to be worth more than 495 million per year to the Australian economy. And that was in 2015. And it's actually predicted to reach 1.6 billion by 2025. Geospatial services generate over US 400 billion globally every year. The value is much greater if you actually take into account some of those indirect economic benefits created by consumers in job creation and inefficiency gains across a range of sectors. The growth of Australia's space sector must be demand driven. We have a great opportunity to better integrate our spatial and space sectors. A coordinated strategic approach to integration could establish and grow a domestic spatial industry that gains international competitive advantage in high value areas such as advanced geospatial, location intelligence services and communication. Stronger integration could accelerate innovation and productivity gains in key Australian sectors and empower the use of location to connect data and supply chains in a way that improves safety, health and sustainability of our communities, ultimately making them more livable and resulting in benefits to our society, the economy and our environment. 
There has never been a greater focus on our space industry than there is right now. And we need to urgently take advantage of this to drive development of our two industries jointly. The Australian space strategy uh, the Australian civil space strategy is a key reason for our increased focus on space. It outline the, outlines the government's plan to transform and grow our space industry over 10 years to meet the goal to diversify the economy, triple the size of Australia's space sector and grow an initial 20,000 jobs by 2030. The vision is an industry that lifts the broader economy inspires and improves the lives of Australians. To achieve this, the strategy outlines actions to open doors internationally, increase national capability, promote responsible regulation, risk management and culture, and inspire and build a future workforce. Within this strategy, the national civil space priorities guide activities within Australia's space sector sector. Geoscience Australia has direct government investment in two of seven priorities, covering PNT and Earth observations, which we are leading through our government flagship programs, Positioning Australia and Digital Earth Australia. As a national organisation, Geoscience Australia is bringing the benefits of space and spatial to all Australians. Our work delivers on ground impacts as set out in our 10 year plan. Creating a location enabled Australia is one of six key pillars of GA strategy 2028, with the aim to ensure Australia's future of jobs, economic growth and sustainable use of our land and marine environments. To create a location enabled Australia, GA is investing now, positioning for the future, and partnering for progress. Our expertise in collecting, maintaining and analysing large amounts of data is fundamental to make it easier for people to access and use satellite and spatial data and integrate it into their products. We create innovative ways for Australians to benefit from space and spatial by making data findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable for Australian businesses, governments and communities. Through our cross-discipline approach, we're creating a location enabled Australia by integrating digital mapping, satellite data and real-time positioning. This supports faster and cheaper, as well as smarter approaches to decision-making and location-based activities. We are investing in Earth observations. Currently, Earth and marine observations are worth $29 billion to Australia, with this to forecast to increase to $96 billion by 2030. Free and easy access to satellite data is a key driver of innovation and growth across Australia's industries. The demand for high quality, nationally consistent satellite data is growing. Geoscience Australia is annually funded $12 million by government to open up access to over 30 years of Earth observations. Through our Digital Earth Australia program, we're removing the technical barriers to accessing EO data from the United States Landsat program and the EU's Sentinel program. We're cleaning and analysing 30 years worth of Landsat data and augmenting it with Sentinel data to create products and data sets to help Australian businesses take advantage of the data and to support best practice government decisions. Our Earth observation data is already helping Australian businesses and governments better understand environmental conditions such as soil and coastal erosion, impacts of land management practices, deforestation, urban development and water, and qu water quality and availability. We're providing anyone with the ability to observe and map our landscape, cities, and even individual paddocks. Our world leading expertise in earth observations extends across the globe with our satellite data technology being introduced into Africa. Here, it will provide free and easy to use satellite data to support Africa's own development priorities from sustainable management of land and water through to digital transformation. We are investing in positioning. We're improving Australia's satellite positioning. 
the position, navigation and timing data from GPS and other global naviga navigation satellite systems to make it significantly more accurate and reliable. Geoscience Australia has been funded 225 million by government to create a world-class positioning service. Today, your position can be determined within an accuracy of five to 10 meters. We're driving toward a positioning accuracy of 10 centimetres across Australia and New Zealand's land and maritime zones. And we're also enabling three to five centimetre accuracy in mobile phone range. That accounts for about 99% of Australia's population. This level of accuracy delivered with a suite of new open source software for processing GNSS data will open up opportunities for existing technologies to be improved with high accuracy positioning, as well as giving rise to entirely new technologies. For example, centimeter level positioning will transform the way farmers manage crop pests and diseases. Farmers can spray crops with precise timing, location and amount, reducing the, the exposure of pesticides to humans and animals, saving water and improving efficiency, while also reducing labour costs. Robotic weeding can do away with the need for pesticides altogether, making the detection and removal of weeds vastly more efficient, cost effective and safer for the environment. Centimeter, centimeter level positioning can make our mining and construction industries safer for workers. Accurate real-time mapping of equipment and people on site can be integrated with sensors to immediately alert site managers to hazards and avert accidents. And there's many more applications that integrate high accuracy positioning into consumer products, into our smartphones, our drones and our wearables. This improved positioning infrastructure will support innovation and add at least $6 billion to the Australian economy over the next 30 years. Our positioning software and data are freely available to all industries to support growth, research and innovation across a range of sectors. And we're investing in ground infrastructure. Our ground station at Alice Springs presides, uh, provides essential communication between satellites and Earth to receive and relay satellite data back across the country and around the globe. We work with a range of local and international stakeholders to make this happen, from engaging with traditional owners of the land to partnering with international space agencies to share data collected by their satellites. It's through these investments and data expertise that we're able to make satellite data free and easy to use for all Australians. Together with our colleagues across government, academia and industry, traditional owners, local communities and global space agencies, we're bringing the benefits of space to all Australians. We are positioning for the future. Geoscience Australia are the custodians of Australia's national scale geography baseline. For users to be empowered to analyse, advise and make decisions on the critical challenges and opportunities that Australia faces, it fundamentally relies on an understanding developed through the lens of geography. Under our strategy 2028, we have a vision that will require a multi-year program of alignment and investment starting with the foundations. All authoritative national content will be readily accessible online and on demand, and we will ensure to make, we will work to ensure it is fair. Our applications will be reviewed and integrated where possible, and we will modernize our advanced analytics and visualization platforms. A broader cross section of key st stakeholders will be engaged as partners, including Australian business and the public. Following this, we will provide rich personalised views of the data. This will be enabled through an expanded set of authoritative dynamic content and capabilities. We will position to expand and in some areas introduce the latest technology developments. Anyone, no matter where they are or what they're doing, can access data, information and analytics. And finally, we will deliver the capabilities that underpin creating a location enabled Australia. 
the broadest cross-section of Australian business, government and public, will be enabled to make decisions in 3D and 4D and be able to leverage capabilities integrated for their mission or their industry, <coughs> excuse me, from localised views such as the movement of coastlines, um, right through to predicting the impacts of hazard events at a national scale. And we will continue to position for the latest technology developments. We're also working with partners to position our Earth observation and PNT futures. Delivery of space enabled services depends on reliable and continued access to satellite data. Australia does not have a history of sovereign ownership of EO and navigation satellite systems. Instead, our focus has been on exploiting existing space capabilities through international partnerships, thereby taking a multi-source approach by which Australia integrates and fuses data from different suppliers. There are benefits to this approach. The applications we develop are richer. They leverage the strengths of different systems and use multiple systems to augment spatial and temporal coverage. In turn, Australia is insulated from technical failures or sudden policy changes, which are unlikely to occur across all partners at once. Of course, there are risks in relying so heavily on foreign partners to build national capabilities. Continued investment in ground segment partnerships will continue to be a key part of generating goodwill. Australia should also contribute to partnerships by continuing to encourage global coordination of satellite systems and the adoptions of standards and open data policies. And Australia's space industry should develop sovereign capabilities and systems that address our key risks and opportunities. We should be looking to areas where Australia can add to the space segment of critical partner programs, address our unique local or regional needs, strengthen our multi-source approach through cross calibration of foreign missions, and identify and mitigate risks where only full sovereign control would reduce our exposure to an acceptable level. These are just some ideas that I hope can entice discussions about our PNT and EO future capabilities. In partnership with the Australian Space Agency and other core government partners, we're developing an Earth Observations Roadmap. The roadmap will help us ensure that we can contribute to can continue to um, contribute to the global observing system, support use of satellite Earth observations in our region, and use satellite data to benefit our own research economy and communities. As part of this, GA and the Australian Space Agency commissioned a study from the University of New South Wales. The study focused on the feasibility of a satellite cross calibration radiometer made, uh, mission as a mechanism for the Australian space industry to develop these key benefits. The report from this study was released earlier this month and determined that this mission would be both achievable from an Australian manufacturing sense, but also fill a critical calibration and validation gap globally. This study is an important input to the EO roadmap activity and Geoscience Australia will develop the PNT roadmap in conjunction with the Australian Space Agency later this year. We are partnering for progress across government. By default, GA makes its data, science and capabilities open so that they can be used by anyone across government, industry and research organisations. By way of examples, we're partnering with federal and state territory agencies on water compliance in the Murray-Darling Basin, wetland management strategies, coastal erosion through our new DEA coastlines tool, and a new national land cover product. And Digital Earth Australia's hotspot application was extensively used around 900,000 times by all levels of government during the 2019-20 bushfires. Under the Positioning Australia program, GA is maximising positioning infrastructure throughout Australia by partnering with state and territory governments, as well as business, to include their data streams within the national positioning infrastructure capability. This will further densify our network. 
and we're partnering with industry. GA, in partnership with Land Information New Zealand and Frontier SI, undertook a trial of accurate positioning technology. This trial, known as the SBAS testbed project, assessed the economic, social and environmental benefits of improved positioning technology across 10 industry sectors through 27 demonstrator projects. These projects tested how SBAS can improve existing technologies or give rise to innovation across the economy. These projects included, for example, precision agriculture, automated driving, parcel delivery, and mining vehicle tracking operations. GA also regularly promotes opportunities for all industries to test the ability for GA's data, data sets um, to be used to help solve their problems. One such innovation program is Digital Earth Australia Labs. DEA Labs is a small scale targeted incubator program for the private sector. DEA Labs opens Australian businesses up to offers uh, Australian businesses the opportunity to use satellite data and DEA technologies to solve real world problems through collaboration and the provision of funding and support. It brings together end users and the private sector to innovate and solve challenging real world problems while helping the DEA, DEA program better align areas of focus gather data on impact and closely measure success. One such uh, success from the DEA Labs initiatives is the development of a new approach to estimating pasture biomass by SIBO Labs. SIBO Labs came to the challenge with specific questions developed from consultation with the agriculture industry. How many kilograms of available pasture do I have in each of my paddocks? How many grazing days do I have ahead of me with no rain? What are my ground cover levels and how do they compare to last month? How healthy is my land compared to other properties in the region? For Digital Earth Australia, the initiative uses calibrated imagery from Sentinel-2 and the calculated fractional product uh, and the calculated fractional cover product, which depicts the amount of vegetation observed. Pastoralists can use an app to record on the ground observations from their properties. These data sources are analyzed together with cadastral data and through machine learning algorithms to output a weekly update to 100,000 grazing properties across Australia, depicting how much feed is available in every paddock. We all understand the power of space and spatial information, and it's important to meeting the challenges and opportunities we face across our economy, our environment, and our society. The key is in how we invest wisely, position for the future and partner to deliver outcomes. To close out my presentation, I ask you, our spatial and space colleagues, to take our openly available data and tools to create new innovative applications. We wanna hear from you. We wanna hear how you're using our data infrastructure or software. We're also eager to hear if you, you're interested in being developed in, uh, being involved in the demonstrator projects. Um, how can you take our real-time precise positioning service and couple it with foundation spatial data, earth and marine observations data, or disaster hazard exposure vulnerability and impact content to generate new innovative solutions? By leveraging the full range of our data, tools and capabilities, I have no doubt that we will be well positioned to create a location enabled Australia together. Thank you.